Good afternoon, CSN Chem 121 students. This is Dr. Garner. Today we're going to be giving a lecture on um, lab experiment one, which is laboratory measurements. We're going to be looking at measurements for lengths using a meter stick, uh, volume, learning about the fact that there is different types of chemistry glassware that is uh, used for measuring and some that's just more for estimating. Uh, we'll be looking at the analytical balance and how we measure mass and then finally measuring temperature um, in degrees Celsius and learning to convert that. Alright, so the first thing we want to start to look at is um, when we take a measurement, um, what number of digits do we need to include? And that's going to bring up the topic of significant figures. Uh, we're going to say that significant figures are all the digits we can read off a device. And this is for an analog device. Uh, but because sometimes the object that we're measuring uh, doesn't fall exactly on one of the um, division markers of the measuring device, we have to estimate one last uh, additional digit. So for example, here I've kind of drawn a portion of a, of a meter stick here where this is 20 centimeters and this is 21 centimeters and there are 10 division markers between 20 and 21. So each one of these division markers is worth 0.1. What we see here is I've extrapolated the line of, this is a, like an outline of a piece of paper and it's falling between the first division marker and the second division marker. And so now I have to estimate that last digit. So, um, so what I'm going to mentally do is kind of blow up this area and go, okay, how many uh, tenths of a division mark is it between those two uh, division markers? And so I'm just going to say that I think it's about halfway. So, so I'm going to, again, now write down those digits. I read off the device, 21. Uh, is right here and 21.1 is here so it's not quite 21.1 and it's not 21.2 so I have to say well it's 21.1 and about halfway to 0.2 and so that gives us the number of digits that we can read off this device remember we read uh, the first three digits and then we estimate the last digit and so and then I have to give it a unit of measure and so this is in centimeters and so when we um, uh, have a measurement like this uh, we assume that it's plus and minus one in this last estimated digit because somebody might think oh it's not exactly halfway it's only four tenths of the way or six tenths of the way uh, and so when we have that we have some uncertainty in that last position and so it's really 21.15 plus or minus 0 0.01 centimeters now if the if the scale is really compressed right then we might not be able to mentally divide that into 10 um, equal um, estimated digits and so, um, so sometimes if it's not plus or minus one in the last position, we'll, we'll have to write down what the uh, uncertainty was, uh, like plus or minus uh, a five in the last digit. Um, but for this lab, we're just gonna assume that we can mentally um, divide it into tenths and it's plus or minus one in the last place. For today's lab, we're gonna need to measure both the length and the width and record it to the correct number of significant figures, right? Um, it's going to ask you to give your, this is, so this is the width I just measured and I measured it in um, centimeters, right? So it's 21.15 uh, centimeters, right? It's also going to ask us then what is that width but in meters, right? And so now we have to say, okay, how do we show that we can um, convert the unit of centimeter to meter, right? So the way we do that, remember, is to just use dimensional analysis. So if I have my 21.15 centimeter, 
I use a ratio that relates the value of the centimeter to the meter to transform and cancel out the centimeters, right? I have a mantra that I use for introductory students. It's be, always be one with the prefix, and then on the other side of the um, conversion, we put the meaning of centi, and centi means 10 to the minus two. Now, there's more than one way to convert between centimeters and meters. So people that are more familiar might already know that a, the, there's 100 centimeters in one meter. Um, and as long as you're using it correctly, it doesn't matter. Um, so what that's going to end up doing is just move the decimal two places to the left. And so we're going to get 0.2115 meters. So then I can write that in up here. So when we measure this length, we're going to want to line up the meter stick with the edge of the paper and then read across. Right, so we're going to line this up and then look at where it hits the fixed scale. And so we're somewhere between uh, 21 and 22 centimeters, and now we have to count the minor division mark. So it was uh, 21.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5. So I'm going to record this probably at 21.45. Now I need to record in the other direction. And so, again, I'm going to line it up with the edge of the paper, and I'm going to find out that it's between 27 and 28 uh, centimeters. And so I'm going to read across the division mark, so 27.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's probably uh, just past the, the 0.8, so I'm going to read it as 27.85. Let's talk about how we calculate area. Area is, of course, length times width, right? So um, in the previous thing, we measured the width, but I'm going to tell you what I got for my length. I got 27.80 centimeters, and our width was 21.15 centimeters. So I plug that into the calculator and then write down the answer and round it to the correct number of digits. So I got 587.97 and because it's centimeters times centimeters, it's centimeters squared, right? But we have to think about significant figures now, right? So for the rule for, for multiplication is uh, the answer can only have the same number of digits as the factor with the fewest. And so we have four sig figs and four sig figs and so we need to round this after the fourth digit, right? So between the nine and the seven. So the seven, of course, is going to round up. Remember that anything uh, five or more by our textbook uh, tells you to increase the preceding digit. When I increase nine to uh, by one digit to ten, it's going to make this 588.0. centimeter squared okay and so now if we want to do the area but we want to get it in meters squared why don't we just take these numbers but in meters instead of centimeters right so remember it just moved the decimal two places so if I have 0 0.2780 centimeters or excuse me meters um, then um, 0.2115 meters. So that's basically going to move the decimal a few places, right? So we end up uh, punching that in on the calculator and we get 0.0588 and 0. So again, four digits or four significant figures.
right? Remember the zero in front of the five is just a placeholder and it doesn't count as a significant figure because we could write this in scientific notation and that zero would go away. So the five, the eight, eight, and the zero are four sig figs. If we have four sig figs here, we should have four sig figs here, right? All right, next we're gonna talk about volume measurements, right? So uh, the volumes we're going to be uh, measuring are gonna be measured using a graduated cylinder, which is a measuring device for volume, uh, liquid volume. Um, what we're going to find is that we're, we're looking at the error that um, the graduations that are estimated on like a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask are not very precise and also it's even worse on a 50 mil beaker. So the Erlenmeyer flask actually does list a graduation that's 50, but for the beaker, it ends at 40. And so what we end up doing is we figure out the spacing between 30 and 40, and then we eyeball that this imaginary area or filling line here would be 50. So that's 50 estimated. So we're going to fill the first the Erlenmeyer up to 50, then we're going to need to measure it, right? So we're going to measure it using a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. So about here would be, say, 50 on the uh, graduated cylinder, right? So we're going to be pouring the liquid into the graduated cylinder after we've Build it to 50 here. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the division marks on this graduated cylinder. They actually have 10 division marks between 50 and 60. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then here would be 60. And so I have to look at the um, water level um, after I've poured it in and so let's just assume that it came in to like about here all right so this is all water down here remember what we have to do when we measure um, with a volumetric uh, you know graduated cylinder is we have to make sure that we get our eye right at eye level so that we can read across perpendicularly to read the bottom of the meniscus right so this is a, in the 100 mil grad cylinder all right so we can see that the meniscus is slightly above 50 but it's not quite uh, all the way up to 51, right? So I have to be able to estimate, again, this measurement reading, right? So, so since this graduated cylinder reports to the nearest whole milliliter, I'm going to need to read the 50 milliliter, but then I need to estimate one more digit. 50 Point five. And so I'm going to get a reading, right, uh, by holding this at eye level and then um, estimating that, that the volume is something like 50.5 milliliters. Now we're going to want to find the error between what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be 50, but we actually measured it at 50.5. So we're going to take the absolute value of the difference between those two numbers, and we're going to find that the error 
for the Erlenmeyer flask is 0.5 milliliters. So now I'm going to do the same thing, um, but with the 50 mil beaker, right? So remember the 50 mil beaker didn't even have a 50 mil division marker because this is just used for estimating. It's not used for measuring, right? The grad cylinder is used for measuring. So I fill up to where I think the, the beaker's estimated 50 mil um, level would be with water, right? I did that by estimating how far between 30 and 40 and going an equal amount above it to, to where I thought it was 50. And then I pour it into the graduated cylinder and I look again at the meniscus. Remember, I have to get it at eye level and then read across, right, perpendicular. And so we find that it's a little bit below 50. It's, um, let's see, this is 40, so this is 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, between 47 and 48. Alright, so we ended up getting that the error was 2.4 milliliters, right? So remember, it's absolute value, so we don't care the, that it was under 50 or over 50. We just want to know how big of an error it has. And so the way we determine that is to measure what we call percent error, right? So percent error is the error, which is the absolute value of the difference, compared to the true value times 100. The true value is the value we measured, which ended up being for the beaker 47.6. The error was 2.4. Plug that in and calculate it um, and multiply it by 100, and you get 5%. We have two sig figs here, three sig figs here. Our answer can only have two sig figs here. All right, next we're going to talk about uh, measuring mass in the lab. Uh, so our um, lab uses analytical balances that have draft shields on them. They're very precise uh, mass measuring um, balances. Um, and so they're a digital device. They get a readout. Uh, and so we're going to read all of the digits off of um, the readout on the analytical balance. Uh, and so the ones in the GenChem 1 lab go to three decimal places. So we're going to need to record the masses of some objects and we'll write them all down out to the three decimal places past the decimal point. Right, so we're going to do this for um, a penny, uh, a medium size test tube, which is labeled in uh, millimeters. It's like a 100 by 13 uh, millimeter test tube, but it's it's a medium-sized test tube. And then last, uh, we're going to ask you to measure the mass of a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer uh, flask. Okay. And so you'll just quite literally just uh, zero the balance, put these objects in there, record the mass. Um, you know, when you record the mass, make sure you close the um, draft shield, okay? Um, okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is zero out the balance. And we're going to put a penny in and record its reading. And I'll get a test tube. For temperature, we're going to be measuring uh, the room temperature, 
We're going to measure some water, so we're going to put about 100 mils in a 250 mil Erlenmeyer flask. Um, and when we when we do the, this uh, temperature measurement, you'll see that I have to suspend the thermometer so that it's not touching the bottom of the um, beaker or flask. Sorry. Um, and so, um, and then the last one we're going to need to measure is the temperature of ice water. So. In the 250 Erlenmeyer flask, you're going to half fill it with ice and then just add enough water to cover the ice. And so that will give us our three temperature readings. And when we re so when we record temperatures using the thermometer in the lab to measure room temperature, you're just going to take the thermometer, hold it out in the air. Um, without putting your finger on the tip where it, it, it um, heats up the liquid, right? It's an alcohol-based uh, thermometer. Uh, and again, when we make a measurement, though, we want to make sure we get it at a perpendicular eye level. So bring it up uh, so you can read it um, and read the bottom of the meniscus, right? So, so here we see the major division mark is at 20 degrees or 30 degrees, and then there are these minor division marks. So each one of these, there's 10 of them, is worth one degree Celsius. And so, well, what if, what if the meniscus falls right on that first division mark, right? Um, so it's exactly on 21 degrees Celsius, right? So I have to say that it's 21, which was right off the device, plus I have to tell somebody it was right on the division mark. And so I would record it as 21.0 degrees Celsius. Uh, looks like we're at about what, 19. Yeah, so it's uh, each each one's got a um, one degree Celsius division mark. So if we're between the 19 and the 20, then we're going to have to estimate it. So it'll be 19.8 or something. Water. We'll fill this up to a hundred. And when we record, we're going to want to suspend this there for a minute. Yeah. Oh, it's gone down. I think maybe it's still slowly going. It's hard to not touch the ice. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Looks like it stopped to me. Alright, so it's probably what? About one degree? About one or point eight degrees yeah. or something. Looks, looks a little bit less than one to me. Yeah, point eight or something. So when we, um, after we record our temperatures in Celsius using the thermometer in the lab, we're going to need to convert them to Fahrenheit and then also to Kelvin. So first of all, we have to look at, like, this is a formula where, right, it was, these values were derived um, by comparison of reference points on the temperature scales. And uh, 32 is the exact freezing point of water in the Fahrenheit sale. So we're going to treat that as an exact number. So what that ends up doing is telling us that the, the 
you know, the measurement of the temperature in a different measurement unit is going to end in the same decimal position. This is kind of a, 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 a quick and easy way to remember this. So we had measured 21.0 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to multiply by 9 over 5 or 1.8 is the same and multiply that first then add the 32 by order of operations and then out on the calculator comes your answer which is 69.8 degrees Fahrenheit right so this one ended in the tenths place and this one also is going to end in the tenths place now we're going to need to do the temperature in Kelvin, which is the absolute temperature scale. And it takes the temperature in Celsius and adds 273.15. This is not exact. It's not an exact number. So, so that five will end up rounding up the one to a two so right so if I plug this in 21.0 plus 273.15 right the five is going to round this one to a two and so we're going to get what is that 294.2 Kelvin notice that the Kelvin doesn't have a degree symbol and notice that um, again the temperature is going to end in the same decimal place, which is the tenths place. Um, notice that we, you know, we don't think of it as sig figs here because uh, it's addition rule. It's all about decimal places, right? Um, and because we added so many to the 21, right, we ended up gaining a digit in the hundreds place, right? So we end up having more sig figs. Well, that's it. So hopefully. Um, you have any questions let your lab instructor know and i'm sure we'll get back to you as soon